The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. session. <laughs> Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. Today is the last new material we're going to be covering this quarter. We're going to do section 11.6, 11.7 in the chapter review. Tomorrow we'll review for a test. Tomorrow, Tuesday, you'll take your last chapter test, chapter 11, and then we will spend uh, Wednesday, Thursday of this week, and then Monday of next week reviewing for the final exam, which is Tuesday of next week. I will be leaving town shortly thereafter, uh, the, the final. So if for some reason you are delayed in taking the final, you'll probably just get an incomplete and you'll have to wait until I get back to from wherever I'm going, which will be in September. So there you have it. All right, having said all of that, do you have any questions about the homework 11.5 over the weekend? Anything uh, you want to look at? Yes. Did you do number five and six from 11.5 part two? Okay. Let's see, 11.5 and 11.6, or 11, <laughs> yes, number five and number six. Okay, let's see here. Okay, you are in the second class. So let's see if I find it there. There we go. All right, you said the second part of 11.5, numbers five and six. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Kuwait is located at the head of the Persian Gulf, that is located, has one of the greatest population growth rates in the world, Bulgaria and Southeast Europe as one of the smallest. Use an exponential growth decay model to complete the table. Round your answers to the nearest integer. Okay, so. Let's see, this is, oops, number five. This is 11.5 part two. Okay, so we're supposed to use the exponential growth decay model. So A equals P times E to the RT power. And we know that the starting population, so P, is 2,789,132. The annual growth rate, which is R, is 3.501%, which would be 0 0.03501. And it says estimated population 2020, so time, equals 10 years. Okay, so let me switch back to the other screen. All right, so we know that the population, the growth rate and the time. So A equals 2,789,132 times E raised to the 0 0.03501 times 10. All right, any questions so far? So let's put that into the calculator and see what we get. 2789132 times E to the parentheses 0 
times 10, close parentheses, equals. And I'm getting 3958362.526. This is round to the nearest integer, which would be the two. The five would round up. So we should have 395, oops, wrote it incorrectly. 3958363. So your population, 3,958,363. You okay with that part? Yeah. All right. Then the second part talks about Bulgaria. Notice Bulgaria has a negative growth rate. So that means the population is going to decrease. Okay, so this is number six. Again, we're gonna use A equals PE to the RT power. P is equal to 7,148,785. The annual growth rate is negative 0.768%, which is negative. 0.00768, yeah, and again, the time is 10 years. All right, so back to the whiteboard screen. Our equation becomes A equals 7,148,785 times E to the negative 0.00768 times 10 power. So we will go to our calculator, 7, 1, 4, 8, 7, 8, 5, times e to the negative 0 0.00768 times 10, close it up, push the equal sign, we get 6, 6, 2, 0, 3, 11.427. We're going to round to the nearest whole integer, the four rounds down. So we get 6620311. Six, six, zero, one, one, six million six hundred twenty thousand three hundred eleven. All right, with that. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody before we go on? Would you do number seven? Okay. Part two. Sure. Let me. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah. Number seven. Okay. Let's see here. So, is this it right here? Yes. Okay, great. So, what have we got? It says the quantity of a prescription drug in the bloodstream of a patient, T hours after it is administered, can be modeled by the exponential function. See the graph. Find, from the graph, determine the time it takes to eliminate half of the initial dose from the body. Okay, so this is time in hours. So basically the initial dose, 100% of the dose is administered at the beginning of the problem, okay? As hours go by, the amount of the initial dose still in the bloodstream decreases exponentially. So when is half of, it, half of it eliminated? That would be when 50% of it is still present, which would be right there. Now, our scale, each of these little hash marks is two. I can tell that because this is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, okay? So the question is right there, is right there, which is about seven hours, okay? So do you see where I got that from 50%, half of it still in the bloodstream, seven hours? 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Anybody? All righty. Then we will go on to section 11.6. And let's see here. I need to get the white screen back up. All right. It's 11.6. I'm going to go back to a problem that I introduced early on in this chapter, and I believe it was this. I said 2 cubed equals 8, 2 to the fourth power equals 16. If 2 to the x power equals 11, then what is x? And then I went on to say that you could take 2 to the x power equals 11, change it into a logarithmic equation, and you'd have log base 2 of 11 equals x. I also then went on to say, the problem is we don't know what log base two of 11 is, but at least in this form, X is isolated. Now, most scientific calculators have log base 10, common log, L-O-G, or log base E, natural log, L-N. However, most of them do not have a key that looks like this log and then the base and the quantity are little boxes that you can fill in. Okay, most of them don't have that. So what we need to do is figure out how to put this into our calculator when all we have is log base 10 and log base E. There is a formula in section 11.6 and that's the one thing we're going to extract from 11.6. It's called the change of base formula. And it looks like this. It says log base B of X equals log base A of X divided by log base A of B. Now, basically A in this case can be any number that is an acceptable base. But remember, bases are limited to certain numbers. What the base has to be positive and not zero. The quantity you're taking the log of has to be greater than zero. Oh, when I said positive and not zero, I meant positive and not one, sorry. And then the quantity you're taking the, the log of has to be greater than zero. So what we want to do is we want to use this formula, but for A, we want to use either log base 10 or log base E. However, we want to make sure that they are the same. So we're either going to use base 10 on top and on bottom or base E on top and bottom. Don't have 10 on top and E on the bottom or switched around. The A has to be the same base in both the numerator and the denominator. All right, so let's go back here and we have log base two of 11, all right? So log base two of 11, let's use log base 10. So that would be log base 10 of 11 divided by log base 10 of two. And of course, I don't really need to write the 10. I could just write it like this, okay? So let's find out what that is and let's take it out to four decimal places. So log base 10 of 11, close up the parentheses, divided by log base 10 of two, close up the parentheses, and I get 3.45943161919. And I said, we're gonna round to four places. The three would round down, so 3.4594. So basically I'm saying that two raised to the 3.4594 power is approximately 11. Now, it won't be exactly 11 because we rounded this number off. But let's see, two raised to the 3.4594 power. It comes out to be 10.99975, awfully close, okay. But my point is I can do that by using this change of base formula. Now, I can also do this using natural log over natural log instead of common log over common log. So let's say I've got log 
base two of 11. And I write that as the natural log of 11 over the natural log of two, okay? So natural log of 11, close it up, divided by natural log of two, close it up. And I get the same thing, okay? 3.4594 rounded to the fourth decimal place, okay? So now I'm gonna do some examples from 11.6, a few more of them, and then we'll stop the recording and go on to 11.7. So here we go. It says, use the change of base formula to find each logarithm to four decimal places, log base three of seven. So that's going to be log of seven over log of three, or natural log of seven over natural log of three. And again, either way, you should get the same final answer. So log of seven. Close it up, divided by log of three. I'm getting 1.77124. The four would round down. And again, I'll get the same answer using natural log divided by natural log. All right. Any questions on this process? Let's take a look at another one. Log base one half of six. So we'll say what, the natural log of six over the natural log of one half. So natural log of six, close it up, divided by natural log of one half. And I get negative 2.58496. So the nine would round up, or I should say the six will round up, giving me negative 2.5850. All right, any questions about this change of base formula? All righty, then I'm gonna stop the recording.